this is hands down not the most embarrassing childhood memory <laughs> that I have. But this started it all. Oh. Hello, guys. My name is Autumn. Um, I am just one of the many beautiful hosts of this podcast, Brave Conversations. This is episode one. I know I said last time, like last episode was episode one, but it's I, I titled it episode zero, okay? Because I was just giving you the rundown of the rundown. You know what I'm saying? So this is actually episode one of season two of, again, Brave Conversations. For my old people... Konnichiwa. And for my new people, hello, welcome. Now, you're probably asking, like, why do old people get Japanese and I get English? There's nothing wrong with English. English is good. Japanese is good. But, like, what's, what's with the differences, bro? Like, I ain't come here for that. Don't worry. I got you. I'm going to get you to run down and how you can also um, be classified as an oldie, you know? Ugh, oldie i like it it's, it's for me I'd be classified as an oldie all you have to do is hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you can know when i post on youtube and also i mean if you're not a youtube person i understand if you're listening to the podcast ver podcast version of this go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcast streaming net uh, platform that you are on right now and become a brave conversationalist that is what my oldies are they're brave conversationalists they're fam i know them so that's why they get japanese and you just get you know my siri hello did i sound like siri y'all let me know in the comments um but yeah that's all you have to do and then the next time you watch another video which you should you will you know officially be a part of the fam a brave conversationalist and you get that japanese greeting as well um so yeah don't have fomo get with the program period um so this episode i'm gonna give y'all a brief synopsis we're gonna be talking about something that i feel like everybody's talking about nowadays and that is anxiety and i'm not trying to give you like no tips or anything oh, I am. I'm not, even gonna, I ain't, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm. I'm gonna be telling you guys how I deal with anxiety, and most like to be more specific, social anxiety. But you'll you'll get the gist of it once we get into the video. So like, yeah. Without further ado, let's just get to it. I'm rambling now, and see you on the flip side. Do people even say that anymore? I don't know. In the temporal realm. The testimonies within an individual are considered especially insignificant. On this podcast, the dedicated hosts who articulate these personal narratives are members of an elite community known as the Brave Conversationalists. These are their stories. Welcome back. That was brief. I'm saying like y'all left for a long time. Anyway, um, so yeah, so anxiety. I have what they call embarrassment anxiety meaning that i get anxiety about feeling embarrassment let me break that down for you first off this is something that god has been working with me about for like a very long time okay like um i've always had no no i'm not, I'm not even gonna say always but i feel like my social anxiety really peaked in high school and, you know, that's a bunch of contributing factors. But like, this is just something that I've been talking to God about for a long time. And what I've been asking God for is to just like get rid of it. Let it be gone. Like decease. Like. I'm done. Period. Anyway, so like. That's just something I've been talking to God about in. It was this one particular prayer. I mean, I've, I've been praying the same prayer. Like, God, get rid of this anxiety within my heart. Let me not be anxious for anything. And, you know, just like stuff like that. But this one particular time, I got a little frustrated with God. Like, I was just like, God, like, what's the issue? Like, I'm praying. 
I've been praying for a very long time for you to like, you know, help me with this anxiety. And I feel like nothing is changing. And I got mad with God. We had a little tiff. It's fine. You know, we, 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 I'm like, I'm like Jacob, you know, I was kind of wrestling with God, not physically because like, I'm too lazy for that. And we all know who going to win. Like I don't fight battles. I know I'm going to lose. So like, <laughs> I had a little tiff, you know, I got in my feelings with God a little bit. And in that prayer, you know, I was like, oh, come on, what, what gives? Like, what's the issue? What's the problem? Like, what's the disconnect? I needs to know. And so I asked God, I was like, God, where is this anxiety coming from? Because I thought my thought process was if I knew where this anxiety stemmed from, I could eliminate it. Like if I could just know at what point in my life, who did it? Like (laughs) who made me this way? Is it me? Did I make myself this way? Or was this like somebody else? Like was something said? You know, I, I really wanted to dig deep into this. So that's what I asked God for. I said, God, reveal where this anxiety is coming from and you know like always like DoorDash God delivered and I left him a tip period always leave God a tip Mm -hmm. for sure okay that's enough that's enough um so yeah so God delivered and y'all, he delivered in such a strange way, as he always does with me. I've I've come to see that his pattern with me. Like I asked him for, you know, for clarification on things. And he never just gives me the answer like I expect, which I like. I'm not I'm not complaining about it. Keep doing it. I mean, it's very edifying. Um, but anyway, so like he brought forth a memory from my childhood that I completely forgot, to be honest. I didn't forget it. Like, of course, it's there subconsciously, but it's not a memory I often think about. In fact, I forgot it even happened to me. Like, I was just like, oh, snap. That did happen. Dang. But anyway, so I was shocked by this memory first off. So let me just give y'all what the memory was. Okay, we're going to do a little story time. So get your tea get your coffee like me Mm -hmm. hold on that was good get your tea get your coffee and get ready for this okay so once upon a time there was a girl i'm just gonna stop there i'm sorry (laughs) but um uh we're gonna we're gonna go back to you know 10 i've i've I want to say I was 10 years old. I think third graders were 10. I'm not really sure what the age range for that is, but it was in third grade, y'all. And this one particular time, I, you know, I was just chilling in class, you know, the teacher was going over addition tables. Now, addition tables is just like, you know, we were just going like one plus one is two, two plus two is four, three plus three is six, stuff like that. And we were just going down the line. I wasn't paying attention, though. Like, real talk, I was in La La Land. I was daydreaming about something. I don't even remember exactly what I was daydreaming about, but like, come on now. We all know that 10 year olds, nine year olds, however old I was in that, in that time period of third grade, our attention spans are very short. Like you gotta, you gotta up the, you gotta up the excitement. You gotta, you gotta bring me, bring me. I like that. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that to y'all for the podcast listeners, but you gotta bring me to, you gotta, you gotta connect with me in order for me to fully digest what it is that you're saying she wasn't doing it okay it, yeah my teacher was a sheep by the way but she wasn't doing it and so I was daydreaming and it, and she caught me okay it, it was obvious I wasn't paying attention so she said autumn what is so-and-so like she asked me one of the addition table problems me I mean remember y'all I'm third I'm in third grade 10 year old this is new to me I don't know anything about addition yet this is the first time it's being brought to our class's attention so you got to put yourself in that in those shoes like now we know our addition like we know how to add hopefully we know how to add we know how to subtract we on all that but I didn't know that back then this was new stuff this was like a foreign language and I was like uh I don't know I ain't say I don't know, but that's kind of what I was given. Like my facial expression was probably given like, I don't know. But yeah, so she was like, mm-hmm. go up, go up to the chalkboard. Like this was back when we had chalkboards. We didn't have, uh, I think it's called Promethean boards. We ain't had that yet. 
We ain't have what they got to name them dry, dry erase boards. We ain't have all that. We had a chalkboard. So she told me to go up to the chalkboard, right? So I go up there, right? And then she says, draw a table. Y'all, okay, don't laugh at me, bro. But like, again, I wasn't paying attention during this lesson that she was given. So when she told me to draw a table, y'all, in my head, I was like, like a table? Like <laughs> the table you put cups on like the stuff you sit on like a table so like i paused for a second because like i was like why is she telling me to draw a table like what is this for and like she was like autumn like, oh, draw a table because like i was just frozen like i was just like did she want me to draw a table and so then of course you know you know third graders are immature so like i'm hearing all this giggling in the background and ooh, ooh, all this <laughs> you know all that and so i proceed to draw an actual table like <laughs> the table you sit at so that's what I was drawing and she was like Autumn what are you doing and I said I'm drawing a table and she was like see class she turns to class this is why you need to pay attention in class because if you don't you're gonna end up like Autumn and you're not going to understand anything that you're doing and blah, blah, blah. She made this whole speech about paying attention and stuff. But that's not what I want to focus on. It's not the word she said, because, you know, after she said she basically used me as an example for the whole class. And I just want to highlight the feeling that I felt. I felt embarrassed, of course. Um, I'm being used as a, a pariah in 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 the class. I'm being shamed publicly amongst my peers um, about, you know, I mean, I do admit that I was in the wrong for not paying attention, but basically she didn't say that I was quote unquote uh, stupid, but that was, that's the energy energy she was giving. Okay. And so I, and that was being publicly, you know, put into the atmosphere amongst my fellow peers and we all know that kids that age um some are very cruel with their words uh bullying is is high in that moment and you know and I cared okay and at that age I cared about what my peers thought of me that's just I mean when you're that young that's what's just what you do you care and so um I felt inadequate I felt small and when she told me to sit down uh, sit back down at my desk I I don't think I spoke at all throughout the whole entire school day and in fact my I was just very depressed and my motivation to learn was gone um and so that was the memory that God brought forth to me after I asked him to reveal where my anxiety came from and it took me a while to really understand why that memory in in particular but I had to realize that God didn't bring that up, that memory up to say, you know, to, for me to use as an excuse of why I act the way I act today. He just wanted me to remember the feeling I felt in that moment. And I've started to think about like what other times in my life did I feel that feeling? And y'all like it's important for me to highlight that emotion that feeling because that feeling of inadequacy that feeling of embarrassment of being small of feeling uh, that feeling of being like stupid of not being able you know to do something and I despise that feeling um I don't especially in a public setting like I don't want to feel it when I'm alone and I don't especially don't want to feel it when I'm in front of other people especially people that I have to see every day because for I mean if it was a bunch of strangers I'm not going to see that person again they're probably they probably not even you know they won't see me again and it was just in that moment but when it's in front of people that I see every day that I'm going to be around every day that know me personally it's going to be brought up like all the time and so I'm gonna constantly feel that feeling of inadequacy the feeling of uh of being unable the feeling of embarrassment and so I began to resent that feeling and so all throughout my life I have worked my hardest to avoid feeling that and that is where lies 
the problem. God was basically saying, girl, you can't avoid that. Girl, like that's a part of life. And so, yeah, that's basically what God was telling me. Like the reason why he brought that forth and he made me feel that again is because like he's trying to tell me like, Autumn, you've been trying to avoid this feeling. And by you are trying to avoid this feeling, you have stopped yourself from doing things that I have called you to do. And so to give y'all give you guys a little context about my personal life. I mean, that's what you're here for, right? <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> um, but anyway, um I recently, I mean, I graduated, like we already know. And so I'm um taking a gap year before I apply to med school. And within that gap year, my main goal is to gain clinical experience. And clinical experience, I mean like patient facing, interaction with patients, interactions with patients, and you know, um, maybe like shadowing a doctor a little bit. And you know, just working in the healthcare field for a little while, um, just to, you know, it's very highly encouraged by med schools for, you know, your for applicant to do that because they want to know if this is really your field or not. Like, do you have passion for this or not? Or are you just doing it, you know, because it's glamorized, it's honored to be a physician. And so that is something that I wasn't able to do during my four years of college, because that's usually when med school applicants do it. They do it during their undergrad. But because of COVID and all that other stuff, which you can go back to season one where I talk about all that, what, what I went through. Um, I wasn't really able to do that. And so I'm doing that now during this gap year. And one thing that came to my attention was this medical assistant apprenticeship program. I'm not going to say where it's at, but I apply. I applied for it recently, but it took me a long time because I. I didn't think I could do it like the stuff that you have to do as a medical assistant. If you go in with no knowledge about, you know, medical, if you have no medical knowledge, like, you know, how to take vitals and check a pulse and, you know, blood pressure numbers and all that stuff. Or if you've never even like roomed a patient or, you know, been in a healthcare setting, when you first start doing stuff like that, then of course you're going to experience, experience embarrassment. You're going to experience inadequacy because this is something new. And so that's where I am. And so for a long time, I feel like God was saying, like, apply, apply for this. This is it. This is the experience you need to see if the medical field is for you. This is the experience you need to really stand out as a medical um, school applicant when you apply. And I was avoiding it. Like, I was like, ain't no way. No, Lord, like, you know, I'm going to be embarrassed. Like, you know, I'm going to have that feeling I felt when I was in third grade. So, like, why are you putting me through that? And it's going to take a while for me to feel like I'm doing I know what I'm doing. And I'll probably never feel like I know what I'm doing. This is just the conversation me and God are having, like, verbatim. Like, but God was like, well, Autumn, this is it. I got you. This is it. But I was like, no, God, hold on now. This feel this is red flag this is red flag this is giving me torture this is giving me um um despair depression I don't want this I don't want that feeling I don't want to feel embarrassed and so I was avoiding what God was calling me to do and so this was a revelation for me this memory that conversation um and then I started to identify other things that I've avoided in my past just based off the fact that I felt like I was going to be embarrassed if I was to do it. And so I didn't do it. And so that has set me back in many areas of my life, professionally, personally, financially. And it ends today. It stops now. And so God basically had to sit me down and said, look, There is always going to be a period of discomfort, a period of anxiety, a period of um, discouragement, inadequacy that you feel when you are doing something new. It's just inevitable. You can't avoid it. You can try. 
Like you can try to train before you get into that position, but you just never know what you going what you're going to be presented with. You can do all the studying you want, you can watch all the videos you want, but until you're in it, you'll never fully grasp what it is that you have to be, what it is that you have to do until you're in it. I wanted to bypass all that. Like I just wanted to 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 go in into the position knowing exactly what to do but how am I supposed to do that if I've never done it before there's not no amount of books that can prepare me for actually talking to a person like actually you know and to be in that healthcare setting and so God had to really help me and work through that if I was going to be elevated to the person he wanted me to be So I want to turn your attention to Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And this is the NLT version. We rock with NLT at Brave Conversations. That's not an ad, by the way. I just wanted to let y'all know what, what Bible version I'm rocking with. So Romans 5 chapter 5 verse 3 through 5 states we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love And that that verse really hit me because, again, I was trying to avoid the trials and tribulations when really that is the in the trials and tribulations is is where God's strength is empowered. It is in those trials and tribulations and in your weakness where God truly, you know, crafts you. He prunes you into the person that you we're meant to be it is where you grow it is the area of growth It's when you experience something that makes you uncomfortable and so I was trying to bypass that so I was never growing I was never you know I can never step into the 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 person that God wanted to be and in a way I was rejecting the Holy Spirit I was basically saying that like I don't trust that the Holy Spirit will get me through my trials and tribulations so I'm gonna just take control and put it into my own hands and we all know you can't do nothing by yourself you can try but ultimately you'll burn out you'll fail and uh yeah that's just a dark road I don't I personally don't want to go down and so um that was just like my thought process. And so I also, he also brought forth uh first Peter. Okay, okay we know, okay. We know, we know Peter. Peter. We know we Peter. Know Peter. <laughs> if y'all don't know, I'm gonna say that every time Peter comes up. I love me some Peter. So this is first Peter chapter five, verses eight through ten. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share his internal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you and he will place you on a firm foundation again guys God was just telling me like hey you're going to be uncomfortable for a while but that's that's where I'm working that's where my best work is performed when you are in that struggle and after and and the one thing I learned y'all is that the struggle is temporary like it's not like I'm gonna continuously feel inadequate eventually I am am going to understand what it is required of me to do the job I just have to get through that little period and so 
I just I just felt so such relief when I heard these things. And, you know, I started to be filled with motivation, which is very rare for me. Like it's it's very rare to get me motivated about things because I'm just like, okay, that's good for you. That's good that they work for you. But, you know, how does that work for me? And so to be filled with motivation was a shock with me. Um, But that's what the word does. So now you're probably like, okay, that's good for you. Like I just said, that's good for you, Autumn. But uh, what do they got to do with me? How do I apply this to myself? And I could come on here and like, you know, say you need to do this. You need to do that. You should do this. But, you know, I'm just going to tell you what I do. And hopefully it resonates with you. I'm always try to rhyme. y'all. I'm like a like a Dr. Seuss. Anyway, so like how do I apply these truths to my life? Um, I want to bring up a quote that was in one of my Bible plans on YouVersion. Um, I don't remember who did this Bible plan. Hopefully, if you've come across this quote uh, or this saying, you can know and leave it down in the comments what Bible plan this is for all my YouVersion peoples. But the quote says, the world's response to feelings of inadequacy and anxiety is to inflate your self-esteem with pride and y'all what he was or she I don't know again what he or she was referring to was like you know those times you know those videos like and those like psychologists just like you know if you feel this about yourself or you believe this about yourself stand in the mirror and just do a bunch of I am affirmations do a bunch of self affirmations get yourself a self affirmation card deck and read them out and it's just a bunch of statements saying I am beautiful I am this I am that I am strong I am powerful and all that stuff now that stuff never worked for me and it don't matter how long I've stayed consistent with it it just never worked for me and I always felt foolish and I always felt like I didn't believe it any anything. And so I'm going to tell y'all why I believe it didn't work for me, because a constant prayer that I am praying to God is to never let my heart be filled with pride. Why do I pray that pride never enters this beautiful heart that I have in my body? I'm glad you asked (laughs) because first John chapter two verses 15 through 16 explains why I don't want that pride in my tide okay (laughs) that was bad I'm sorry um anyway let me read the bible yeah let's get back to that anyway so first john chapter 2 verses 15 through 16 says do not love this world nor the things it offers you for when you love the world you do not have the love of the father in you for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure a craving for everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions These are not from the father, but are from this world. So that is the NLT version. And that's the version I understand. But I think it will make more sense if I read this version of um, which is the ESV version. And this is of um, first John chapter two, verse 16. It says for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the father, but is from the world. Now, what is the pride of life, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Okay, so the pride of life in this context is anything that is of the world. And so basically it's saying anything that leads to arrogance, um, ostentation, um, pride in self, uh, presumptions, and anything that leads to boasting is the pride of life. And that is the tactic that the devil uses often to disconnect us from God. Um, The pride of life occurs in Genesis chapter three, where that's where sin entered. And so I always ask God to never let pride enter my life, never let it enter my heart to, to, you know, um, put blinders over my eyes to what is true and what is godly. Um, and so that's why I feel like them self affirmation tips that people give when you feel like when you have anxious thoughts or when you feel bad about yourself and stuff, it never worked on me, even if I attempted it because God, what was answering my prayers again and making sure that that stuff didn't seep into my heart. And so 
I'm not going to advise you guys to do that when it comes to how how do I, uh, you know, get rid of my anxious thoughts? How do I get rid of the feeling of inadequacy? Well, I'm going to tell you guys, here's what I do. OK. All right. And I got this from version as well. version is a good app. Like if you want to get into the Bible, get that version. I write down my most anxious thoughts and I mean, my, by most anxious. I mean, I write down all my anxious thoughts, but then I kind of um, do a scale of one to ten about which ones are the most anxious. Ten being the most that brings me the most anxiety and then like one bringing like no anxiety at all. And so I take uh, the highest ranking thoughts and I write them down and then I t- um, put them as old thoughts. And under that old thought, I pair it with the scripture in the Bible that combats that thought and I title it the new thought because why do I title it new thought because it is going to be my new thought every time this old thought pops up in my head I am going to recite this verse in the bible because my old thoughts are lies they're deceitful things that the enemy tries to plant in my head so that I can never reach or you know tap into that person that God had created me to be and so when you combat lies with truth then the lie has no power. You, 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 you're getting, you're getting what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So then, so that's what I do. And so, I mean, and this occurs a lot because I'm a very anxious person. And so um, I find myself repeating this verse over and over and over and over again to give you guys examples as far as like the MA program, my first, my most anxious thought was that I would never be able to do the job that I would fail at my job and that I would get fired. And so the verse that I chose to combat this lie, you got to you got to call it what it is. It's a lie. To combat this lie is Psalms 73 verse 26. And let me read it out for y'all because you know, who wants to read? (laughs) My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And by my portion forever, it just means that he is mine forever. And so the reason why I paired this scripture with my old thought of that I was going to be a failure is because, yeah, I am going to fail within this job. I'm going to drop the ball sometimes. That just happens. But then I remember that quote I, I stated in the last episode. A failure in the eyes of man is a success in the eyes of God. And God is the strength of my heart. So although my heart may drop the ball, sometimes I have the Holy Spirit within me. And so God is not going to let me fail for long. He is going to take that failure and he is going to he's going to put, you know, let me grow. He is going to let me learn from this. And so that is what I recite when that thought pops in my head. A second, my most my second most anxious thought that I had pertaining to the MA program was that I would never be able to room or like, you know, handle the patients, talk to the patients, you know, give them a good experience while they're, you know, in a doctor's office. Cause like nine times out of 10, you don't really hear good news when you're at the doctors. And so, you know, it, it the first point of contact that you have is with the MA or a nurse. And so you come in, it's just a whole lot of, a whole lot of, and I just thought that I would never be able to step up to the plate and do it effectively, efficiently. And so the verse that I paired up with that is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. And it states, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It also, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. This verse actually touches on a lot of things. It touches on what love is, what it's not. It touches on how you should love others and how you yourself should be loved by others. It also touches on you know, because God is love. And so it's kind of telling you God's love for you. And it also touches on how you should love God. And so but but that's not the lesson that I got from this during this time. What really hit me was the line where it says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. 
And the reason why that part really struck out to me as far as um, in regards to this old thought that I have in my head that I wouldn't be able to ruin patience is that the reason why I feel like I'm going to fail in that area is because I, I feel like the patient is going to realize it's going to view me in a bad light. They're going to view me as less than they're going to view me as incompetent, um, inadequate. And that's an embarrassing feeling. Like I told you guys, I'm afraid of that feeling. And so for me, what this what this verse is saying is just like, why are you trying to be something that you're not? Why are you trying to boast, put on this facade when you're interacting with these people? That's not what I want you to come as your full authentic self so that you can have connection. God wants us to connect with our fellow brothers and sisters so how can you connect when you're bringing this fake persona? And so the goal is to love. The goal is to make sure that this person is getting the treatment that they want, the treatment that you would want if you were to walk into a doctor's office. And like when I told myself that that should be my goal every time I interact with other people around me, my coworkers, the patients, uh, the doctors, anybody that I come in contact with, strangers on the street. When love is the first thing that, you know, that you're trying to put out when you make these connections with people, everything else doesn't matter. Like, I'm just trying to make this a more a peaceful area for both of us. And I'm just going to come in being myself my weird quirky self with the goal of making sure that this person leaves satisfied with the service. And at the end of the day, if you strive to do that, you'll drop the ball a couple of times because everybody is different as far as like what type of service they expect to be spectacular, but it's fine because with good intentions, everything else doesn't matter. And so, yeah, that's what I do. I write down my anxious thoughts, my most anxious thoughts, and I combat it with truth, God's word. Um, and over the period of time, I've saw joy into my heart. I have peace into my heart. I am excited to pursue this program. I really hope I get in. I have an interview that's coming up. Um, it's a long process to see if I'm even some like admitted into this program, but I'm excited for it. Um, I'm excited to do God's work. I feel like this is something he has called me to do. This is the area that he wants me to be in for this season. And I'm excited to do the best to my of my ability of pleasing God and honoring his name. And, you know, just putting out that love that he has for me and putting it out to other people. Now, if you don't believe me, if you're just thinking that I'm just like just saying things out of willy nilly. This is in the Bible. Okay. This 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 feeling that I feel, this peace that I feel about my trials and tribulations, this is Bible talk, okay? This process that I just told you I do about fixing my thoughts on the truth, which is the word of God instead of the lies, this is, I didn't come up with this. Nobody else came up with this, no scholar. This is what God told us to do. And I'm going to tell y'all, this is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. And it says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer, in petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things and that's from paul okay the one and only apostle paul we know that we love paul here we know paul we cool with paul just like we cool with peter all right and so that is what so this this new tactic is not something i came up with it's not something that uh, some scholar or theologians came up with this is from god himself using paul as a vessel and so it works point blank period you try it out there's nothing wrong with just trying it out don't reject it i mean it's up to you really but i'm just telling you this stuff works for me 
I'm excited now. Like I was very anxious about this. I was actually contemplating if I wanted to apply. I was like, I'm just going to find something else. Like, God, I know what you're saying. Do this. But like, I'm going to find something else. Like, because I ain't, I ain't got time for that. But I tried this out, you know, using scripture, a strategy from God. And it works. So you try it out. But it worked for me. Hopefully it works for you. And uh, in regards to this episode. That's the game. Peace. So that is the end of this episode of Brave Conversations. This was season two episode one and i'm excited to really dive deep into this season with you guys coincidentally this is also the one year anniversary of brave conversations yes yes it's been a long time and so um i'm very happy to be doing this episode to be recording this i should say on you know our one year anniversary thank you for sticking with us all our oldies um thank you for the new people that have come along for the ride and welcome to the family you are now a brave conversationalist i have some questions for you guys i got two questions that i really want you to contemplate and i want to hear you know i want to hear your answer okay because we're a family like <laughs> don't leave me on red <laughs> yeah um, anyway, uh, what embarrassing childhood experience had a greater influence on your current perspective than you realized? Like that memory, like I said, it was buried deep in my subconscious and I didn't realize it had an impact on my life like that. So what childhood experience had an impact on your life that you just not realizing? Like, hey, that actually did really affect me. OK. And so um, the second question is, what scriptures do you turn to when you are, you know, being um, bombarded with all those anxious thoughts? Like, what do you what scriptures do you use to combat the lies that the devil tried to throw at you, girl? And boy, so my bad. And um, yeah. And just remember, guys, to cast your worries and your anxieties onto the Lord and he will handle it. There is nothing too big nothing too big for him he can handle it all okay and so he wants to take on those burdens for you his yoke is easy and it's light as jesus says okay um so cast your worries on to him so let me down let me know down in the comments those answers to your questions um you can also follow us on social media on instagram and facebook at brave combos for my YouTube people, you'll see the tag, uh, our username tag at the bottom. But for my podcast people, let me spell it out for you, girl. Boy, my bad. I keep doing that. My bad. It is at sign B-R-A-V-E-C-O-N-V-O-S at Brave Combos. You can also, you know, you know, reach out to us through that as well. If you're more of a social media person. OK, um, and you can also, if you're really brave, leave a voice message for my podcast. People just go down to the uh, description show notes um, and then there should be a link from Anchor telling you how to leave a voice message. And if you're on the YouTube Go ahead and go down to Anchor, find us, Brave Conversations, and Anchor will show you how to leave a voice message. And I will use that message in my next episode. Um, I will, I'll disguise your voice. Anything you want me to do, if you don't want to be, you know, identified, if you do want to be identified, let me know um, in the voice message if that's where you want to go and we can go slow. I don't know if that, I'm always trying to rhyme, you guys. I don't know if that worked out. But, um so yeah do that subscribe to this channel like it share it you know spread the love like that's what all god wants is us to spread the love you know what i'm saying and um if you're listening to the podcast subscribe to this podcast on whatever podcast streaming platform you are listening to we are on a bunch of platforms apple Podcasts, spotify um stitcher radio public uh, you know google podcasts we're on all that so you know go find us listen to us there and um yeah i'll see you guys next week and i am on fleek i tried bye guys <laughs>